In this series of videos, I've been showing you how I've illustrated the winning stories from the Welsh Books Council Darlightful Schools Writing Competition. In today's video, I'll show you what happens when it all goes wrong. But let's not talk about it. <laughs> let's do it. I think this is my hardest one, The Real Ultimate Treasure Hunter by Fionn Half Davis. This is a real fighting fantasy kind of thing, and it's not the sort of thing I read. It's not my style. Uh, but, you know, I've got to do something within the whole <laughs> kind of series of illustrations. So I've decided there's a character called Avon Mora, and she's described as a human ball of fire, <laughs> ginger flowing hair, red to uh, yellow ombre dress, and of course, the opal. Uh, she faces you, silver eyes brimming with tears as if she reads your thoughts. So she has this sort of opal on her chest, and this is my first little sketch that I do. Um, and then this here is the kind of second sketch that I've done, a little overlay, so defining it a bit more. And now what I need to do is to kind of draw it. In some ways, this whole, uh, the, doing the whole book is quite a tricky um, illustration project because, uh, hang on, I'm going to give her this kind of fur trim to her dress. Um, it's a tricky um, project altogether because, um, you know, it spans quite a wide age group. So if you're kind of illustrating for um, primary and um, the juniors. That's, that's, you know, sort of one kind of style that you might use. But if you're illustrating for a secondary, you feel it should be different. And yet, the whole book has to have a kind of a, uh, you know, a feeling of unity. So so the illustrations have to have a sort of, sort of similarity to them. But, but, you know, the stories are very, very different. And this is a very sophisticated, much older kind of story. So I need to kind of bring the shoulder right up there so that we can reveal the opal amulet like that which I'm going to have strapped around her. So the amulet is a very important kind of thing. So we want this kind of flaming hair and I'm what I'm going to do is I'm not going to draw it all I'm just going to kind of do um, suggestions of it really. So she's going to have these great sweeping kind of wings coming out which are almost, <laughs> almost like eyebrows in a way. I'm just going to speed this up because I need to concentrate rather than think about what I'm saying. And I'm I'm not going to put any dots in those eyes because it says that silver eyes. So I'm not going to draw every single strand of hair. I'm going to um, draw suggestions and then we can fill in a lot more with the paint. <laughs> Knowing that I'm going to paint on top no, means that I know I don't have to sort of draw every single last line of hair and then I'm going to add these bits almost like they're kind of licks of flame and it's a red and you know sort of flaming dress as well so kind of a white sort of very trimming to the edge of the dress which is I hope they're going to split the dress from the, the ground major kind of a fold there and there we want to get this sort of curve of the body mm -hmm. and then we might have another little bit showing underneath there and then I'm going to be kind of scratchy here with my shadow underneath here to um, I don't know make it look so that it's not just shadow but it could be you know hay and straw and a kind of a rough ground it's knowing when to stop adding things before it gets too cluttered I'm not happy with this <laughs> so uh, I'm going to start all over again with this one I think I don't quite really like the fur edge to her frock, I don't think. And various other little things, which once you start to uh, draw, once you start to paint, you think, oh, I'm not quite sure about that. So I've decided I'm just going to do it again, the bits that I'm not happy with. I know some people will look at this and go, well, that's cheating, you're just tracing what you've done before. And, and I think it's probably the, the closest way to describe it is it's a bit like editing really so you know if you'd written you know a 5,000 word essay or something like that and when you read it through you go ah, that's not quite right maybe I need to add a bit more here and cut that bit there and maybe I need to do a bit more research on that bit there and just get that part right you don't then go and rewrite the whole <laughs> 5,000 words from scratch. You know, you kind of go through it and think, oh, change that bit, change that bit. And so this is very similar. So I'm not going to 
going to draw the whole thing from scratch because basically I'm quite happy with it. You know, there were just these things. So the first time I come to paint it, I thought, oh, that's not right. So I'll change that little bit here and change that little bit there. And I hope the next time I paint it, it will be <laughs> just fine because I don't want to spend the rest of the day painting this again and again. But if it isn't, then, you know, I just come and redraw it and work out quite what's not right. And because this is a kind of a fighting fantasy style that I'm not, you know, it's, it's not my style, but I'm kind of applying my style to it. But I feel slightly, it's, I'm not, I'm out of my comfort zone, let's say that. You know, it's got to be done. And I think that's kind of one of the things of being a professional il illustrator. Is it isn't just about, you know, in an artistic way, like, oh, you know, this is what I like to draw. This is what I like to paint. It's about what I'm being asked to draw and what I'm being asked to paint. And <laughs> so you have to kind of put yourself aside a little bit and uh, think about think about the story, think about the think about the reader and the viewer, and you know what what do they want? Because it's really about pleasing them and making making the story better. And, you know, enhancing the story. Illustration is all about telling stories as opposed to, you know, other forms of art which are all about self-expression or whatever. But illustration is not really about self-expression. It's about telling stories. And when you're telling stories, you don't do it for yourself. You do it to entertain and to please the person who's reading the story. Now I'm going to do this similar kind of, more of a lacy thing than a a kind of a fur thing that I was trying to do before. This is very much um, a kind of a fighting fantasy style. Fighting fantasy people, readers and, you know, viewers and film buffs and all that kind of thing. There's a kind of a style, there's a very photorealistic style that kind of goes with fighting fantasy and science fiction and things like that. And, well, that is just not my style. And if I suddenly put a really photo... Well, I mean, I, you know, if I really wanted to, I could <laughs> really sit down and spend days maybe working it out and doing it a photorealistic kind of style. But within the book, it would sort of stand out as being a bit odd because it would be a very different kind of style. So as a book, the illustrations need a, a kind of consistency to them. In one way, I'm trying to make it look like, you know, kind of fighting fantasy kind of style, but within the style of the rest of the book, and it's not always that easy to do that. Quite often, I've, I've sort of been asked to do an illustration job and I got to the point where I'm absolute, in absolute tears because I think, I, this isn't my style, this isn't right. The way I've always worked it out is I've gone back to the beginning and thought, wait a minute, I've been asked to do this illustration work because the people know my style and that's what they want. They're not wanting me to suddenly go off and do something completely different. They're trusting me to do something in my kind of usual style. That uh, because that's what they're expecting, and then so that's what I do. I sort of go back and I start all over again, thinking, how would I normally do this if this was like not a fighting fantasy thing, but you know, a normal kind of children's book kind of thing that I do, and then I do it, and then everything is fine. But I think once you start trying to illustrate in in a genre that is not something you're just not is not your normal style, and quite often a, a some you know a subject you're just not interested in then uh, it can get a bit tricky. And if somebody has actually asked you to do an illustration, then you have to assume that they know your style and that, and that that's what they want. That's why they've asked you to do it. And I think in the previous version of this, I think it got a little bit too painterly. I think generally here you can't see the brush strokes. Not a lot. Well, I suppose you can in the yellow in the background. But, uh, I think I was getting a little bit too... I was painting too much. I think the thing is about tracing. I think, you know, people think, oh, tracing is copying, it's cheating. It is if you're copying somebody else's work, of course. But uh, if you put all the hours in, in in the preparatory work and you're actually copying your own work, then that is not cheating. <laughs> so in a way, this is kind of what I was doing before that I was sort of saying was a bit painterly, I suppose. So I'm letting the, the, the brush strokes kind of come in here and using using the brush you know the brush has has its way of wanting to move and flick and leave bits of paint behind on the page and i think i was just getting too complicated in with the previous version which is very easy to do you just get a bit carried away with things and 
when they just get a bit complicated. Simplicity is always best. Unless, of course, complication is your particular thing and you're kind of hiding jokes and quizzes and patterns and codes and things like that within your pictures and making them really complicated because of it. But generally, I think, you know, simplicity is a good thing. And I may have said it in other videos in this series. Uh, I've certainly said it in many other videos. I don't use black for really dark colours. I find black really kind of burns holes into the page under watercolour. And so I use a colour called neutral tint, which is a very dark kind of bluey, bluey grey. And I've added a bit of blue to this as well because black really does punch a hole and kind of doesn't seem to fit with the rest of the thing. Watercolour is such a light um, medium and then you go and put black in there and it, it just pow, it's just too overpowering. And all we really need to do now is to add some shading, particularly around the eyes, to, to bring the silver eyes out and uh, some pattern in the dress and then we're ready to go to print. Thanks for watching and you can support this channel and get so much more on my Patreon page. Click to find out more. Make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Rain and Drawing channel on YouTube and in the meantime, keep drawing, 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 practice, practice, practice and I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye.